Hey, Mark. Hey. Hello. <laughs> Good day. Hey, Alex. Okay, great. So, wait a minute more. Um, no, no, uh, um, update the meeting minutes uh, with your attendance. Um, that, that'll be helpful so we can get an idea of um, who's rocking up. Okay. So one thing I want to do. I'm going to try and actually present. Um, cool. Well, welcome everybody to the uh, uh, UDPA working group meeting. Uh, we've ha kind of had a hiatus recently, so there hasn't been um, you know, a ton of activity in UDPA land uh, for the last uh, quarter, essentially. So that kind of like one of my goals of the meeting this uh, was just to sort of bring folks up to date with what the roadmap looks like, what our plans are for Q1 and uh, and beyond in 2020. Uh, so I've uh, I think maybe a good way to do this would be to just go through the uh, Omicron slide, and I won't go through the whole talk. Just look at speak to some of the roadmap slides. Has is is it, are folks generally familiar with that talk, or is this uh, new to folks? Maybe? I've uh, skimmed through the slides. They seem very informative, so. Okay, so I'll, I'll be reasonably quick then when this, this uh, um, I gave a talk at Envoy Combase talking about the roadmap for Envoy's APIs and beyond, which is essentially UDPA. Um, so the basic stuff I'm sure everybody's familiar with. So let's just move forward and just like look at where we are in the roadmap, uh, which is, this is essentially where I'm at roughly at the end of the uh, last quarter. Um, so we had, um, you know, uh, Envoy V2, XCS APIs, V3, which is what um, most of the work that in APIs that I've been focused on uh, has, has been around. Uh, to, it's basically going to land and intercept the Envoy 1.13 release, which will be next week. We, there's quite a bit of churn right now in the Envoy code base. It's largely a mechanical change, but it also puts in place what's called the stable API versioning policy, where we rev a new major version of the API each year in Envoy and gives us the opportunity to, uh, and we maintain trading support for two versions for so basically for two years. And that gives us the ability to um, you know, make major structural changes to the API, which includes uh, UDPA. So that's actually uh, happening and uh, is landing. And now the focus is on this. GP4, which slash UDPA. And UDPA is um, uh, what we're in the business of doing in this uh, uh, working group. Um, so yes, I talked a little bit about the versioning goals. Um, one interesting thing to point out is, um, is just the sheer scale of what we're doing with APIs here. I'm not sure what the APIs or other proxies looks like, like HA proxy or NGINX, but um, you know, if we look at the, just the sheer line count of the protos, which are, you know, it's a specification for the API for Envoy. 
it's really, really large, uh, largely because of the extensions. Uh, each extension has, you know, its own configuration API. But we're talking about 15,000 lines of protos, and it's actually more like 10,000 uh, code references in Envoy. So there's uh, uh, APIs are a huge uh, artifact, and actually involving them has required us in V3 to build a lot of tooling to support that. And I anticipate UDPA, as it grows, will need some of this tooling. At first, though, where we're taking the, this idea that we'll start with smaller uh, and then grow that upwards. So let's see. Um, why is this not following? Okay, so we're kind of roughly um, at this point where we're talking about um, the idea is that you know Envoy's V4 release will be at year, end of year uh, 2020, and this is where we hope that a lot of UDPA stuff will intercept and we'll be able to move some of the things that exist today in Envoy off to UDPA and consume that as a first uh, class product uh, and basis for API. So let's talk about what we actually want to get done um, in 2020. So um, one of the things that we've even done in V3 is we've actually started to um, Let's see. Um, where was that? Oh yeah. Uh, we've uh, started to populate the UDP repository, and um, um, and uh, we some of the protos that we're using the Envoy APIs with here. There's nothing here that should be particularly controversial or require massive review. There's um, a bunch of annotations we use to express versioning uh, concerns or the fact that certain fields might be redacted or this kind of thing. These are all very uh, structural things. I don't think they actually make a difference to what the API looks like. We introduced a new type, which is called type struct. It looks a lot like any, but um, it allows us to use uh, JSON representations for um, extension objects in the API, but also convey the type information. So it's essentially type JSON, uh, and that's actually very useful in uh, Envoy. To have, we've actually phased out the use of plain JSON without types uh, in V3, and I think uh, we would probably be using type structs in various places in UDPA when we want uh, some kind of structured extension. Again, this is very much the mechanics of how you make that versus what the API looks like, but a few of these things are starting to land. We also moved, I think at some point, this uh, local load report stuff there. I'm not sure uh, where we are with that, but um, that was something that's uh, probably not even necessary in the proxy to support other than as a consumer, but it's, it's got its own design doc. Um, uh, not, 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 not so important, but anyway, Basically, protos have started to land here, and Envoy depends on them in certain ways. All these protos have no Envoy specifics in them. That's generally useful uh, base types and things like that. So um, at this point, I'm not so interested in speaking to. Basically, it was just that we've um, started to think about one of the things that we need to think about is how do we um, write an API specification which can generate docs and where the docs might be slightly different per project. And I don't know if we have a good solution to that yet, and maybe folks will, uh, on this call could, could uh, speak to what they would see that, that looking like. But you know, it's probably going to look something like we've got a base um, set of docs in a certain format, for example, Sphinx RST or something like that, or, that, or some sort of doc generator which could retarget to any uh, format that you choose. And uh, that somehow needs to merge some amount of status, like you know, does this does my proxy support this, or do I have any proxy specific comments on this API with the base documentation? And that might maybe we would have anchor points, and you would be able to supply a manifest which you know maps each of these anchor points to uh, you know the structured information for your proxy, and you just provide this manifest file that the docs build, or something like that. Um, uh, I think that's the, the, the way that I think ideally that would scale, but we, we certainly don't want to put in sort of things like this which isn't implemented in Envoy yet in the docs that are landing in the UDPA repository because obviously that's way too proxy specific. Um, does, is, has anyone had any experience with this kind of uh, documentation built scenario across APIs or has any thoughts there? And, uh, I can ask some of my team members. Um, I think um, I think I know we did 
some things like that and um, um, definitely some kind of overlay approach would be useful perhaps to end up as, as a special like notes or, or like um, uh, specifically formatted uh, uh, notes anchored to available uh, anchors or, or, or even um, uh, figure names or heading heading names or, or something like that. If I if I have any useful information, I'll, I'll share back. Oh, okay. That, that, thanks a lot. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to hear if there is you know existing you know tools or languages that people prefer here, and like you know what 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 works well in practice. I think the, the yeah the general structure of using anchors, I think, is is, is is probably where we would head towards. But I. I rather avoid, you know, not invented here and cooking something up from scratch, which is where we'll probably go otherwise. Yeah. Cool. Uh, okay. So. Yeah, I mean, we have we have generate we have a uh, developer generating or a community member generating like HTML docs out of um, basic SK doc documentation. <laughs> so mm. that's like the worst possible example of, of trying to enrich <laughs> documentation. So like if we can, yeah. if we were able to accomplish that, I think we can sort of hopefully find a more maintainable and, and um, uh, off-the-shelf solution to enrich an existing uh, document structure with, with additional yeah. layers of info. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, for, for reference, Envoy uses um, Sphinx, uh, which is, you know, some sort of Python-based documentation system, which a lot of projects use. And it's pretty nice. It's like, I don't know if it's the best one out there, but it's certainly, it's got some nice features, like, for example, you create internal links and references and those link consistency checking, which is like really good for like, scalable documentation. And it's allowed us yeah, to yeah. docs. I have experience with Sphinx and it's it's a good thing, yeah, for sure. Okay. We'll see if we can if if I can get some some information there, I'll I'll chime in on the mailing list. Cool. Thank you. Uh, okay, so UDPA next steps. Um, so this a lot. Of, uh, I think the roadmap's pretty clear now. We need to actually start doing some things in the repository which will be useful. And I think that the, the, probably the least controversial thing to start with would be the transport protocol, which itself is very controversial, but it, it's at least opinionated about you know, proxy specifics. Uh, the transport protocol is more about delivering objects over the wire, versioned objects, and being able to deal with dependencies and being able to deal with um, you know, um, acknowledgments and errors and all this kind of stuff. And a lot of this is largely gonna be incremental from XCS. We already have you know, the UDPA TP specification, which is, it's still implied, but I think the foundations are clear enough that we could start to build something within the repository and then actually evolve that specification as an, ex, as a, as an actual code artifact. Um, but not as a low level C++ code artifact, because that would probably be a, kind of a lot of boilerplate and very verbose. But the idea is probably put together some sort of executable specification, which looks like the protos and something to actually drive those protos on the wire and pretend to be like, you know, a client in a server. And so I was thinking of, no, we will potentially just start by writing this as a bunch of Python scripts, and then that would become the reference implementation. And from there, we could build compliance tests, uh, essentially using these, and uh, have something which, you know, anyone who wants to claim VPA compatibility with could uh, implement. And uh, we could then think about how that would look in, uh, in terms of getting envoys, for example, to speak this and uh, speak to the rest of the, um, uh, to, to the reference implementation. And there's probably already some choices there, uh, like for example, like what would your specification or your uh, uh, reference model look like? Would it be Python? Should it be written in Go? Should it be written in Rust? And, you know, there's all kinds of questions there that, um, which it would be good to probably hear from folks on because um, all things being equal, I'll probably just write this in Python because I know Python extremely well and it's high level. It lets you write a lot of, uh, express a lot of things without actually writing a lot of boilerplate and so on. So yeah, any thoughts on that? Uh, I have my, my thumbs up for, for the choice of Python as uh, okay. 
as something readable and, and sort of um, close enough to a, a, a pseudo language description that uh, other implementations can rely on for like almost like documentation itself. Okay, that sounds good. Um, Kostin asks, uh, uh, well, chat multiple languages to keep us honest. Um, that's an interesting idea. Um, what, what, Kostin, are you able to speak voice or, uh, or um, not sure, but um, the, the, the main issue here is I would like to just keep this as, uh, you know, we, we, I know there is one canonical reference here, which folks are going to be taking as a specification. So if it's right twice, you know, like once in Python and once in Go, that seems kind of like a lot of work. Um, I feel we definitely do want Go implementations, but there's a difference between like a, a product implement, implementation, like something that you'll be willing to actually use, I say, as your management server, and something that's just there to say, hey, this is what the protocol should look like. Um, uh, I'm actually very interested in hearing from Mark on this because Mark has looked at the XDS uh, protocol today and he's done a lot of uh, very uh, careful uh, nitpicking, some nitpicking, but also just a very careful analysis and uh, auditing of uh, how it looks and where the gaps might be. What do you, the goal of this exercise is to avoid this occurring with UDPA and the new transport protocol we put together. Do you think that just writing a, a Python reference would be that thing that would uh, take us to that place with some tests, or is there something else that you would like to see? I, I think the compliance tests are probably going to be more important than the reference specification, although obviously you need, you know, <laughs> something to, to, you know, make sure the tests are, are doing what they're supposed to do. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 the reason I think the compliance tests are particularly important is I'm, I'm not so worried that, like, if we only do the initial implementation in one language, we won't be able to do it in other languages. I mean, I think particularly if we choose Python, like, we know Envoy is going to be doing this in C++. We know that gRPC is going to be doing it in at least C++, Java, and Go. Um, so, I mean, if, if there are problems that somehow don't let other languages implement the spec, which is hard for me to imagine, I, you know, I, I'm pretty sure we'll be able to, to identify those fairly quickly. Um, I'm, I'm more worried about just making sure that the spec is rigorous enough that we don't have subtle differences in behaviors between implementations. And I think the compliance tests are going to be a lot more helpful with that than the, the reference specification, the reference implementation. Cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm largely in agreement there. And, um, yeah, and hopefully we can, uh, you know, get folks involved in actually just looking at these tests as they come about and the, and the actual spec and, we can get, we get it, we circle back. So, like, my initial um, thoughts are probably Q1 is a reasonable time frame to get to at least the basics of the transfer protocol out there, as well artifacts, and um, get the convergence of agreement. I mean, we can meet back, you know, towards the end of Q1 and say, you know, are we in a place where we want to call this the UPA transport protocol or not? And, you know, most of the, hopefully most of the discussion going forward can be, rather than being done in a Google Doc, can be done as PR reviews, and we can, you know, if we can start with something with the least controversial speech in the UDPA trans protocol spec, get working right, test written, and then, you know, propose a concrete code review, through code review um, extension, like, you know, we need this for federation, we need this for on-demand support, and we can then go work through those discussions in a very focused way. So. That's the goal of that. So I'm, I'm sort of, unless there's more bandwidth and more folks who are able to contribute towards UDPA in Q1, and maybe there are, and I'll be interested in hearing from folks on this, I feel we will mostly be focused on uh, transport protocol then, and then Q2 and Q3 would be about data models, using a lot of the infrastructure that's been built in Q1, and Q4 would largely be, about, be where we sort of take this stuff into to a place where we can actually say this is going to intercept the Envoy v4 APIs, GRPC might adopt this, other proxies might be adopting this, and so on. Does that sound like a reasonable roadmap? Is there anyone who's, uh, you know, interested in contributing bandwidth in Q1 or, or a Q2? It would be great to sort of get an idea from folks if that's the case. So for us, we were a little bit tight on bandwidth during Q1. Uh, I'll see if I can at least contribute with some some of the, like uh, war stories about, uh, for example, the documentation enrichment and, and, and things like this. Um, okay. We are uh, our our primary interest 
uh, for sure relies in, in, in the Q2 uh, scope of data models and uh, making sure that uh, we, are, we either uh, have uh, like sensible and extensible uh, vendor specific extensions or mm -hmm. at least generalized enough um, basic data structures and, and uh, processes that allow us to uh, expose uh, as much of our uh, load balancer functionality as our users expect from us to have. So, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that makes sense. Um, and yeah, I think that that's when we'll definitely really value the insights from uh, other folks uh, um, because we just don't necessarily have the visibility into um, how other proxies work. Um, okay, yeah. I mean, I feel sequencing this way makes sense because we do need to build some of the base infrastructure for just doing tests and, you know, example, clients and servers. And transport protocol is kind of needed before we can really um, you know, do a lot of, which is like, why are realistic? So that's kind of why I went for transport protocol. I also feel like transport protocol is going to be controversial because for sure. you know, this is specifics of proxies. I mean, there's going to be a lot of discussion about, do we need this? This is very complicated to implement, yada, yada. We've already had some of those discussions. Um, but that's, I think those things can stand alone and they're, 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 they're things we can get, get into within the time frame of Q1. Uh, on, on this topic, uh, I, I, I mentioned this before, but uh, one way to avoid some of the controversy is to maybe start with a subset of uh, the existing XDS protocol, which has most of the elements we need anyway. I mean, it's a generic bi-directional message passing protocol with any and typed and everything else. And then iterate on it and make changes as necessary. I mean, if there is strong justification, but uh, we can just put straps the process and have some initial version that is existing XDS minus all the data model and then fix whatever well, is necessary yeah. so we don't start in a void and bike shed until we uh, until yeah, I mean, is done. Yeah, I mean, I completely agree with you there, Carsten. I mean, it'll look kind of like the existing XDS. I mean, I'm not going to guarantee it's Y compatible, but I think that's where what I was thinking of is we would start with like, which is simple enough that it looks very much like the existing XDS. Like, there's a few slight differences that, that, that were there. I mean, was, or is there a reason that you might want wire compatibility with existing I, I don't care about wire compatibility. I care about avoiding the bike shedding and, and uh, you know, making arbitrary changes just because we can. I mean, if we start with the existing protocol as is, I don't care if we change some uh, protocol number or we add or whatever, but uh, yeah. at least we have a basis that is solid and we know we understand and has multiple implementations. I, I, and I then, think... I, I think what we, I mean, I think the, the UDP, T, UDP ATP draft that, uh, that Harvey put together is, is actually a really good place to, to start. I mean, it is very similar to XTS, but it, I mean, I, I really cannot tell you the number of surprising and, and uh, difficult to deal with edge cases that we've run into in GRPC trying to implement XTS. There are things that just semantically do not make sense in the current protocol as is. So I do think that we shouldn't do anything dramatically different. I think, Kostin, I think you're right about that. But I, I don't think just starting from the current protocol as is is a good thing. I think we really need a, we need to start sort of fresh, which is what the UDP TB draft does with the same concepts, but with a, a, a clean thing with well-established semantics that doesn't have any of the backward compatibility problems that, that you know, tie us to these ridiculous behaviors that are grandfathered into XDS. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, go ahead, Carson. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with you on, on <laughs> there are many uh, rough edges and uh, it'd be wonderful to identify them and fix them, but uh, there is no guarantee that if you start fresh, you don't repeat the mistakes. I mean, or you don't end up with something that's us because, you know, usually iterating is, you know, you fix what is broken and you keep what is good instead of, I, I don't know, that's my yeah, experience yeah, so far. Yeah, which, Carson, I think like the, the right way to think about this maybe to, to think of this is like, from a historical perspective. So, you know, XDS when it arose, it arose, you know, we had an idea that it might be more generic than just than Envoy. But re in reality, it was built in the Envoy code base. Mm -hmm. The only tests that existed were the Envoy tests. The only reference client was Envoy and its internal implementation. And that then led to a number of things just creep in when you do that. Um, so the idea with UDPA is we get very clear up front the test for all these crazy corner conditions. And I'm hoping Mark can really help us uh, to sort of out what some of these might be as we go, because we, we, we want to make sure that, you know, for example, like all the on our various error cases and situations where there's like singletons or there's like, you know, a fails lazy on demand load or things like that, that we, we have like 
you know, um, carefully designed things which didn't just essentially evolve into the protocol, which is where we are with XCS today. And uh, I mean, there's been some pretty freaky stuff, like, you know, how we deal with like names and aliases, which is still an ongoing topic of discussion. And some of this, to be fair, we can only really have a, a, a a good discussion about us. We had all the experiences of not having it done right the first time. <laughs> and so we're, we're going to ideally just build on that in UDP ATP. Like we may really rethink what aliases look like in UDP ATP to make sure that, that, it's, that it's very clear why they're, they're there and um, what, what, what purpose they serve. But maybe in the first draft, in the, the first PRA land, let's say, uh, there will be no aliases. We'll strip the aliases out and then we'll put them back. Uh, a full design discussion around adding behavior. Uh, an alternative would be to, to, to start with an existing protocol that is, you know, for messaging, like uh, like the NAT streaming or some other protocols that exist and uh, modify it to our fits. But uh, again, if, if you think that it will, we can avoid the bike shedding and and will not repeat uh, mistakes by, by trying to be genetic and have second syndrome, uh, second system syndrome, uh, Maybe see how it evolves in, 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 in the last next month or so and, and if it ends up with something stable and we don't uh, go down the rabbit hole. Yeah, and the thing to keep in mind is there's already probably going you know, to order a hundred or so management servers out there. Many are just in-house management servers written uh, for XDS. And so we don't want to get, get, go too far away from the existing model. Like, I don't want to move off to some gener generic, like, say, messaging uh, bus architecture or something, or message streaming system, which has nothing to do with, you know, the, the sort of transfer protocol we have today. But that, that's a big rewrite for a lot of folks, I feel. And uh, it's also just, a, yeah, like, it's, it's a big conceptual step. At the same time, things which are just plain weird that we've done the, in XCS the wrong way, which we've done better in other me messaging systems, we definitely should build for uh, take into account like the other folks do error handling better or um, you know versioning better and uh, and we've missed something there. We should just build that into the protocol. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, so that that's all I had on the agenda. Uh, um, part of the part, part of this meeting was just to make it clear that. UDPA is still alive. I, I as a KubeCon and uh, the folks were like, yeah, I heard about the UDPA thing, but I haven't heard anything for a while. Well, the, 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 the answer has been, we've been very, very busy with the V3 APIs. And now that that work is basically uh, tapering off, uh, UDPA is the next focus from an API perspective uh, from the, uh, at least from the Envoy folks and, uh, and from myself. Cool. Okay. Well, Thanks all for joining. Um, I'll probably schedule another meeting in, let's say, probably mid quarter and uh, sync up again then. So the next probably. meeting will be in another time, right? Yes. Uh, this is the US time zone. Uh, is, it, is Europe next? I think Europe's next. Um, uh, I don't know if that helps you out much. Uh, uh, no, no, I'm, I'm not asking for me because the Alibaba people is asking to join the meeting and this is quite not. Apex, APEC friendly. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I realize that. Um, I'll see what I can do to make it friendly to uh, Europe and APEC. Uh, and I know there is uh, someone in Australia. Yeah, I think we agreed on do the rotating, so I think that's yeah. fine. Probably fine for next and, time. I think and, they, uh, they are yeah, very interested in like taking the more like data model stuff, so okay. hopefully we can get more people involved. Um, yeah, Matt's. Um, uh, going to be joining us next time. I think this time he was uh, traveling um, because he's been on vacations. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. Cool. And uh, Harry, just quick uh, meta roadmap question. So sure. at which point do we expect um, roughly other proxies to start adopting the PA? I assume that's going to be after we start defining data model, which is actually going to be some of practical use for those proxies. Yeah, I mean, I think there's, 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 there's multiple reasons proxies will adopt UDPA. Um, some will adopt it, so I'm always just going to adopt it because it's part of our API roadmap. GRPC is likely to do the same because it wants to, it's essentially tacking to the same uh, uh, API roadmap. So that's already two we're talking about. Um, uh, there are other proxy, there are other folks, for example, Citrix has written an XDS adapter which maps XDS to their own internal um, 
or uh, configuration you know, protocol or language. And that's done because they want to be Istio compatible. And they just call it their Istio adapter. And then they're, um, but they're basically, they've, they've adopted XDS. And so once they need to do that for Istio compatibility, I feel that will cause other folks to then pick up uh, UDPA or part, the parts of UDPA which are necessary for Istio compatibility. Now, I, I don't know where the HA proxy folks are. I know you folks are they're definitely uh, tra checking on with many of these discussions. I don't know if you're uh, where you are with your API roadmap, but uh, um, I'll, I'll, I'll let them speak to that. <laughs> All right. All right, cool. All right, thank you. Thanks, Harry. Okay. Thank you for the meeting, guys. All right, thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye.